Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and this is the Sony Bravia 3, and I've been waiting to unbox this TV for a very long time. Now, if you looked at my previous videos, I did an unboxing on the X77L, as well as the X80K, and you guys really enjoyed those particular TVs. This Bravia 3 has Dolby Vision, as well as some of the Sony technology that we see and love to give it that great picture quality, but Sony comes with a healthy price over some of its competitors. But today, let's go ahead and get it out of the box. We're gonna do some basic picture tests. We'll check out the gaming, and then I'll come out with the full review as soon as possible. Let's get into it. Now, according to what size you want, this TV is available again from the 43 inch all the way up to the 85 inch. But the interesting thing, if you have viewing angles that you definitely wanna consider, the 75 inch version uses a IPS panel. One thing I really like about Sony, they stuck to direct backlight, so that should increase the contrast ratio. So this is the 55 inch, and I can handle lifting it on my own, but they do recommend use two people, just kind of putting that out there. But inside of here, we have two uh, feet here, and they are made out of plastic. If we go a little bit further in the box, we get this package that's wrapped up. Basically has a instruction manual to how to assemble the television, but it doesn't have the full PDF, which you can get online. Also in here, we have a power cord, and right here we have the remote control. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. You get some batteries, and if you're gonna mount it on the wall, Sony always has these adapters so it can go deeper into the cabinet, and there's some clips here for wire maintenance. Since it's powered by Google, you do have the voice activated remote control. You also have some hotkeys at the bottom for Sony Picture Core, as well as Netflix, Disney, and a few other ones so you have easy access to those particular applications. Here's a closer look at the feet that I showed you earlier. They're not adjustable, so you can't raise it up and down, but they don't require screws either. You just snap them right into place right here on the bottom. Now down here, we have a 10 watt by two audio system. Cool thing is it has a base port, so you're gonna get better audio, especially being a direct lit panel. This is gonna give you a bigger enclosure. We also have a button here to get through some of the basic menu, power it off. And there's a switch right here to mute the Google microphone if you don't want to do hands-free Google. The back of the TV looks like all the other Sony TVs with that pattern checkerboard look to reinforce the cabinet. There's some ventilation at the top of the television. And with the adapters I showed you earlier, you screw them into here and then you can mount the TV on the wall. And I like the fact that you can change the power cord on this television. The Bravia 3 does have Wi-Fi, but you do have two USBs. One of them is 3.0 a fiber optic output, and then check this out. You have four HDMI inputs. Now one of these eARC for your soundbar, but if we go a little further down, you have an ethernet connection, and it does have an ATSC 1.0 TV tuner right there. Unfortunately, Sony doesn't have a screen pull. What they do is they pretty much mount a cardboard to the front of their TVs with foam on it, so it is gonna protect the TV. And one thing I'm gonna say is I unpacked a lot of Sony TVs and they really take that very seriously. I went ahead and got this TV all set up, but one thing that stood out to me is that besides setting up the Wi-Fi, the Google account, going through Sony's terms and conditions, is that you literally had to put in a parental control on this TV, and I think that's something they could get rid of. This Bravia 3 is powered by the Google operating system and it seems to be pretty good. There's a couple things I wanna point out as we go through just some of the highlights of the menu system, but we'll get to that in just a minute. You also have access to all the Google applications and Sony has their own tab up here. And if you wanna experience and see what Sony's all about, everything's in here, how to's and things like that that you can check out if you purchase this TV. Now, if I was to buy this TV, the first thing I would do is go into the settings. I would then go down to system and you wanna make sure you turn off this sound. So if I turn it back on, everything that you're doing is gonna have this sound and that's not good if you're watching the TV late at night. It could be slightly annoying. The second thing I would do is go into the energy and power settings. Now, power on behavior is that you can go right to Google as soon as you turn on the TV. But if you connect something that you use all the time, like an Apple TV or Chromecast or something like that, you can go to the last input used. Another feature I would turn off is this right here. Shut off when no signal. Uh, as I was getting this video ready, every time I would go into the other room, come back, the TV would be off. So I wanna make sure I keep that off, but that's up to you and it's a personal preference. 
If you're energy conscious, Sony does have this power saving dashboard and it's called Eco Mode. One thing that you could decide is the light sensor. What the light sensor is going to do is whenever it detects different light in a room, it's going to adjust the TV. So you will experience the TV getting bright and darker, but I personally like to leave that feature off. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this menu, but I'm going to show you a couple of things that I think are important. One of them is called external inputs. You do have CEC and this allows the TV to control certain devices like cable boxes, gaming consoles. But here's one of the most important features. It's called HDMI signal format. People in the comment section have told me that they bought this TV and it's not getting 4K. And the reason is, is that you have to go in here and manually turn this on. Unless you have a gaming consoles, it will detect those automatically. But if you don't switch these to enhance, the chances are everything you plug into it are only going to be 1080p. Now you do have a feature called display and sound, but there's something I want to show you. So we'll come back to this. Now, when I first got this TV, it was a 1.2 gigabyte update. So chances are you're going to have to update this TV and connect to Wi-Fi when you get it. But it is powered by Android 12, which is great. That's the newest operating system. As far as storage, you're looking at 7.9 gigabytes and that's not a lot of storage, but of course it has features like the ambient mode. You can cast your different devices to it. And earlier I told you about this TV will do hands-free voice commands. There's that switch at the bottom that you would have to turn off or on, depends on if you plan on using that command. Some people like it for privacy. Another thing I want to tell you is that this little indicator, for some people they don't like that. So you can go in here and turn it off just by switching this over. And the same thing for voice detection. This TV will support Apple AirPlay and HomeKit for your Apple users out there. And it does have Bluetooth, so you can connect your headphones to it as well as other accessories. And as you can see, this is a Bluetooth remote control, so you do not have to point it at the TV if you want to control it. Now let's talk about that TV display option. Well, first of all, if you play something like this, this is a YouTube video. If I click on the little wrench on it, you can see I can change it to the different picture profiles. And there's plenty in here, standard, cinema, vivid, vivid mode. So let's leave it on cinema, for example. But check this out. If I press the gear on the remote control to get over to the picture settings, and then I go back over to that option where it says display and sound. When you click on it, you don't see any options, but here's something that kind of threw me off. When I press on picture, it automatically switches to the HDMI that I have plugged in the back of it for the PS5. So why doesn't it give me other options? And another thing about this is that with the PS5 plugged in, it automatically went to HDR and game mode, and I can't switch it out of game mode. But this leads me to believe if you have a PS5 and you don't want to watch things in HDR, as the minute you hit that gear to get access, it's in gaming mode. And as you can see there, it's saying feature not available, so I can't just put this back in cinema mode or something like that. Now, maybe there's a way to bypass it, but for now, I'm not seeing any option to change this out of the gaming mode and that's something that we should have control over as consumers. Now we're still in the PS5, but let's go see what the capabilities of this TV. What we're gonna do is go over here with this info for connected HDMI devices. Now mind you, this is a 60 Hertz television and I do have an HDMI 2.1 cable plugged in that's always there. But when it comes to 4K, this TV does not support variable refresh rate, but of course you get HDR. And again, it is available at 60 frames per second. Another thing I noticed, there's no option for 1440p, which I've seen in some other TVs like TCL and Hisense, so this is surprising. And then we go over to 1080p. Again, we have access to 60 frames per second in HDR. Now we're gonna check the input lag. We're gonna make sure the TV is in gaming mode. And again, this is a 1080p tester, 60 frames per second. And we're getting respectful 9.4. That's actually pretty good. So far as gaming, you don't get all the bells and whistles, but you do get some good input lag, and that's gonna be great for anything with a lot of motion. Now, as far as gaming bar, this TV does have one. You're gonna take the menu button and press and hold it down, and then you get this basic one down here. So you do have motion blur control, black level EQ, the crosshair, so you can have that in the center, and then you can change the type of the crosshair to different colors. So that's the options as far as the gaming menu.
So my first impressions on this TV, I like the design. It's pretty traditional for Sony. They don't really change a lot really fast, just kind of like Apple. But I like the fact it has hand-free uh, Google voice commands for people who want to use that feature. And you can tie it into the application as well to have access. I do like the fact that this TV has four HDMI inputs. It is 60 Hertz, but there is some room for improvement what I'm seeing so far without doing a full review. First of all, in this price range, you can get larger TVs like Hisense or TCL, and you can get a TV that supports 1440p for people who care about that. You also can get a TV with variable refresh rate. So it leads me to believe this, that Sony really want to focus on the cinema experience. So watching the movies, just kind of playing around with it, I can say that it looks really good on movies. You just can't beat Sony's color science. The second thing about Sony is that reliability. All, a lot of TVs, if you go look at reliability, Sony is one of them. I think what they do is still use premium parts, but at this point, the X1 processor that's in here has been out for about three or four years, unless they did some tweaks to it. And I know it might be hard to change, but it might be time to make an X2 processor that has more capabilities than what we got here. But for people who love Sony, I'm gonna say that picture quality, hands down, is gonna be really good on this television. Not gonna get the blackest black levels because it doesn't have full array local dimming, but as far as colors, I think this is gonna be a great television. I can't wait to get into the full review so I can really take a deeper dive into uh, the settings and the picture profiles and show you Adobe Vision, all that good stuff. And I will tell you that I have two more unboxings to do. Once those are done, we'll start doing all the reviews. So do me a favor, leave a comment below. Tell me what you would like to see in this TV review so I can use that information to create a better video for you. If you haven't already, make sure you go over to 4ktvchat.com. If you have TV questions beyond YouTube where you can upload pictures, you can share your stories as well as upload video clips. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.